Hello, everyone. I'm Telka Clem with Western Computer. I am a NAV Senior Consultant, and today we're going to talk about Accounts Payable ACH Payments in Dynamics NAV 2016. When we start looking at Dynamics NAV 2016 for ACH payments, there's a little bit of setup that we need to take care of first. First, it'll be in our bank account. Under the bank accounts, we're going to need to set up a few fields. I'm going to go to my Posting Fast tab, and under my Posting Fast tab, I need to set up a last remittance advice number. Just like the check number when you're printing checks, the last remittance advice number will advance, so it does need to be a number, and it's going to print out when you do the export so that you have something physical to either email or mail to your vendor about your payment. As well as the remittance advice number, there's some fields on the transfer fast tab that we need to set. The first being our export format. NAV comes standard with three formats, US, Canada, and Mexico. And these are standard banking formats for ACH payments. The next area that you're going to need to set up are both these export file paths and your transmit program path. When you're setting these up, I like to set up the same area on the drive. Now, you're going to notice I'm using my C drive on my local. But more than likely, it would need to be on one of your servers with the security that would be around that area on your server. Then I set up two different folders, one being export and one being transmit. It's going to be necessary that you have these separated, and I'll explain that a little later when we get to the payment journal. You're also going to need to name your export file. This will also advance numerically, and it needs to end with TXT. It will be a text file that's created for your bank. You're also going to need a transit number and a bank account number. NAV cannot function without these in order to populate the fields on the ACH with the information needed for your bank. Along with the bank information, you're going to need to set up some vendor information. Let's look at the London Postmaster here. To begin with, I created a new payment method code called ACH. It makes it easier for me to filter when I get ready to pull my invoices into my payment journal. That way my vendor, I know that I'm going to pay them via ACH. Also, I've got to set up bank accounts for this vendor. So I'm going to click on the bank account, and I get a list of this vendor's bank accounts. Let's edit this card. Up underneath this card, you're going to see that I also need the vendor's bank's bank account number and transit number. And there's a little box here called Use for Electronic Payments. You must check this. I've learned the hard way, so please check it. So after I've got both my bank accounts, and my vendors set up where I've got the banking information on both sides, both mine and theirs, ready to go, I'm going to go to my payment journal. And let's look at how I suggest the vendor payments. I've got my date and find my discounts. And as I come down my fields, you're going to notice summarized by vendor, I check. We normally don't check this when we're doing checks, but for electronic payments, we absolutely want to summarize by vendor. We only want to send one ACH to our vendor instead of an ACH for every invoice we have. Credit memos would also cause this issue. I've got my posting date. I've set my balance account to bank. I've referenced the bank that I set up. And my payment type is set to electronic payment. I also set my filter on my payment method code to ACH. This is where that new filtering comes into play. And it is 
quite handy. So if I say OK, I now have two payments that were created, one for vendor 10,000 and one for vendor 30,000, which are the two vendors that I've set up to be ACH. Now you'll notice a really large amount. If you're wanting to know what invoices make that amount up, you can easily see that under Apply Entries. So you're going to see the invoices that are included. If I wanted to not pay a couple of these invoices, I could delete them from this list. Once I'm ready to go here, I'm going to create my export to the bank. I reference the bank account, again, that I'm using my date. I have a couple options on my posting date. I can change the posting date to match or I can skip the lines that don't match. I want to change the posting date in my situation. Number of copies, print company address are pretty standard. And then I have an output method. This output method is for the remittance advice. It's not for the file. So I want to create a PDF so that you can see it on this video. I'm going to say OK. Choose where my ACH is going, my PDF, I'm sorry. And you'll notice that my document number changes, and it's looking at the remittance advice number now. I'm going to minimize these, and now we're going to look at the remittance advice. Here's the remittance advice where it shows all the invoices that I'm paying for vendor 10,000. And here's for vendor 30,000. If I pull my payment journal back up, I'm ready now to send this file to my bank. And I'm pretty much going to leave this payment journal as is. I'm going to go to the location on my drive where I've located my export file, double click on it, and you can see that I've got a text file here. I would now log on to my bank, upload this file, and once I get verification from my bank that all is good, then I can transmit. I have the option to void if I need to, which will reset these document numbers. But once I've got a good to go from the bank, I can transmit. This does not mean it's transmitting to the bank. What it does mean is I've gotten transmittal information from my bank. Don't do this until you have a good to go from your bank. Once I click and say OK, say yes, giving you several statements there, just wanting to make sure that everything was good. And now I can post. And that's how we do ACHs. We appreciate you watching this video today. And if you have any questions for Western Computer, you can contact us at sales at westerncomputer.com or the phone number on your screen. Again, I appreciate you joining me today, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you.